involved in Occupy Phoenix actually a little before the 15th because I was at that meeting at Bragg's Pie Factory, which I know at least a couple of people here are at, which is awesome. And, um, and I've been thinking about that meeting a lot, actually, the pre-2000 people meeting, because I, at, it was at that moment that I st first started feeling what I think we can call kind of like the Occupy spirit, of the fact that there was this huge variety of people who were super interested in being a part of this movement who all had strong feelings about all of the issues that Occupy was was involved in. Uh, the idea of, of, you know, the problem with corporate personhood and the problem with the corporate influence on our government and the uh, issue with unfair, uh, you know, taxation, <coughs> the wage gap, all of that. And there were so many different types of people um, involved. And the, the photos I have from that meeting have such a wide variety of types of people and I've been wondering how, how we get that back because it seems like I was talking with a group of feminist anarchists the exact kind of, kind of people it seems like who we should totally like be working with and uh, they were kind of like oh well no occupy like I was mentioning like you know kind of co-doing an event to um, deal with a lot of the legislation now having to, that uh, is problematic in Arizona and how there was this, this crossover and it, there was like this weird like split of like well no I mean nobody likes Occupy people basically I'm like hey um, and I feel like there's, a, there's been a lot of that lately where it's like well this is so-and-so's event versus so-and-so's event versus so-and-so's event and when we all could be helping each other so I feel like that's that's a major hurdle and I agree with Michael on that that I think that um, that's that's where I would like to to see us kind of blossom is that kind of this feeling of like hand holding it and things to kind of work together to because That's so many of these issues are so uh, entwined that that it doesn't have to be you know just one group event there could be other people there in solidarity and I feel like that is where we've been sort of pushing people away and it's kind of put up these barriers so because I because at that first event I remember seeing you know. Green Party people and Libertarians and uh, Move On people and Code Pink and uh, and Twente people and all of these different uh, you know all these different interests all together for Occupy. And it's just not that that feeling anymore. So I I love Occupy. I love being a part of it. That's sort of like where I'm feeling that where our where our rising needs to happen is is the inclusive nature. So I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should, I, I, talking of, you know, to, with solidarity with other movement, I think it's really important. How can you cast the winner off? Of, can we press now to go and work with Alan? Let's take the momentum. I think that's something that we really good. Push it. I mean, there's no, that's, that's what we're talking about, right? It's already in front of us. It's allied. It's, right. it's totally allied. So let's take the momentum and can we move a little bit in our heads with that um, already? I think that's where we should go. That doesn't mean forever, just like a stepping stone to get to the end, you know, but the little steps. And we, real quick, someone else can hop on after this and say, we've already put in some time with this. You know, we've already done a big mass action against Alex. We've put in a considerable, considerable amount of uh, effort online about this. Um, so I think that's a. I think this is a good campaign to, to get this, to help facilitate this rising. You know, this this let's resurgence. Let's try to get people back and let's do it right. You know, because I think that's the other thing that we're talking about um, with with um, the beginning was it was it was a new thing. You know, that's that's why I think we made a lot of mistakes. If we're able to learn from our mistakes, that's where I think we can really thrive. But let's not repeat those same mistakes. Let's try to be in solidarity we have this damn button that says solidarity why don't we do it yeah. what does that really mean you know that means let's work with other groups and some of us have i mean some of us have really been doing this and i think a lot of people here here feel that way so let's 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 be solid with ourselves that's that's the whole point i think if we got our shit together then it makes it easier for us to grow someone else so I was reading a book a few days ago. I 
that's part of the problem that I have with actually being involved in occupying things is I seem to always be off somewhere reading a book instead of being here. Um, but one of the things that was really interesting about it, um, the title of the book was A Promise and a Way of Life. It's talking about anti-racist organizing um, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s. And one of the things that they emphasized again and again and again in that book is the problem with the inability for groups to form coalitions with groups that are in some way, shape, or form are doing similar work to what we're doing. There's a you know, huge problem of wanting to always have ownership of whatever part of the movement it is that you feel most identified with. And so even if we have you know, overlapping concerns with so many other organizations in the nation and here in Arizona, rather than wanting to actually join forces with them and actually see where we can get some synergy going and work forward together, Instead, we either want, you know, nonstop are worried about either being co-opted by them or trying to come up with ways in which we can co-opt them. And I think that the more important thing that we can be doing, especially with Occupy that I've seen with my friends, is using Occupy as an opportunity to almost doing activist boot camp for a lot of people. Um, a lot of my friends had no experience whatsoever, period, end of story, with activism. None at all. They had no reason even to want to come out to events because they didn't think this was the way to do things. And pretty much all of them at some point or another have actually been out to Occupy and have been heavily involved at some point or another during the movement. And so I think one of the important things with them is they're now beginning to look into other organizations, other kinds of work that they can do. And I think that's part of where our power lies. It doesn't need to be necessarily under the Occupy brand. It needs to be with getting people activated in whatever area they're inspired to be activated in. Bring all that together and be, you don't have to be anything other than just facilitating these groups working together finding the commonalities because we are they all have commonalities because they're all fighting for human rights I think what I want to say what Sasha was saying is like when we go into other groups I don't look at it as like co-opting I just look at it as be myself and we're we I think we're in, in a way some kind of unique I mean for us to be here even today is kind of it's unheard of it really is kind of nuts if you think about it. But there's something here, I think. And I think uh, just knowing a lot of you is, is we're kind of, we're adding a new flavor, I think, to this whole activist advocacy. Uh, I think that's what we can add, is, is we can push the dialogue a little bit. We're making new policies. I just feel like we're pushing the dialogue, and I think that's new, new stuff, creating a new, why not? Rick, what were you, what were you gonna say? You said something to me in private. Right here. Oh, the statement that you made that we can go to wherever we want. The only place I know where I want to go is forward, full steam. I want to mow down these politicians. I want to get the crooked ones out of their office, empty their pockets, and let them know what it's like to be poor, possibly. So we go Most. for Alec. Huh? Go out for Alec. <laughs> We have, and if you and if you've been keeping up on it, Pepsi, McDonald's, well, that's, Karina, that, that's why we're going after they're them. They're pulling. There's, they're, I just signed a petition to um, um, what's his name, the computer giant, for him and his wife to pull their three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar education grant from Alec. I just went over all of Alex's personnel, and they're they're young, like most of us. Well, including me. Young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing of it is, it scared me that you've got these twenty-year-olds that are thinking of world domination, and that's the only way I can put it. Yeah, I have a point of. Uh, response. I, I think that one area of of kind of all of these uh, intersections. We were talking in one of the small groups earlier about of one of the main goals that of things to do besides basically being that bridge in some ways between groups for other events is that what we can do on our as sort of Occupy in and of itself <laughs> with kind of all the personnel that we have, um, all the bodies that. Uh, is is education that idea of, of having trifolds and, and info that people like snapshots that people can get information especially on Alec um, in, in sort of a, a cheat sheet format 
um, so that people keep talking about it. And um, I think that on that note, one of the best things that we could do besides, you know, that if uh, three kind of point information like what is Alec, uh, here's what you need to know, here's where you can go to get more info, would be a list of the giant amount of politicians who are part of Alec in our state because our state legislator is like the highest percentage in the nation of people involved in Alec and that would be something that I think people don't know and I think that that, that kind of, that would potentially have more outrage I think than listing even the corporations that are involved. Absolutely. I would direct response to you. The reason being is that this state has more people in prison per capita than any country, state in the country. This is a prison industry. And who is one of the main contributors of ALEC? And who lays in bed with one of the biggest lobbyists of the biggest prison corporation in the world? which is CCA, our dear illustrious governor. Their main lobbyist is her past political advisor and uh, campaign manager. Wow. Plus we have Mr. How about Fargo that cooperation? The Wells Fargo building, Wells Fargo being one of the main factor, factors of the private prisons as well. So we've got this whole like incestuous intersection. Well, there. according to sta the no, state was, constitution, <laughs> in order for a private company to come into state and to run a state-run agency, they have to do all the paperwork and show that they can run that that organization or whatever agency, whatever you want to call it, the prison corporation, cheaper and more effective and more efficient than the state can itself. And there is not one piece of paper that shows the documentation that they have done it. Not one. And I've been studying this for three years. All right, Rick. So I'm gonna, maybe I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna try to dominate. I, I do feel like though, I want to this as a as, as a part of this resurgence. I think we need to step up a little bit, and a lot of us have been continue, continuously talking about organization and 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 focus. And in order to do that, I feel like these need to be as productive as possible. Like we need to come. Here, here. We we have a short time. I, everyone's got. The, everyone's time is valuable. We got to stop realizing people are coming from all over the place. How do we maximize that? So, um, but what, without you know being so strict and not trying to manage. But I feel like we need to go out of this with not just ideas, which are good. It's great, but like future action. What are we going to do? So I've been having a thought kind of rolling around in my head lately around the issue of Alec. And one of the things that I've been dissatisfied with about the action we've done so far is that we have managed to show a lot of these ELEC corporations that, hey, you know, if you be involved in ELEC and you get yourself caught, you're going to lose a lot of business, it's not going to be good for you, and that's going to give you a reason why you might want to drop ELEC. But my problem with that is that I think a lot of them kind of think that, well, I can still get away with it if I don't get caught. Or, you know, I'll just wait for this, this bad PR to die down and then I can quietly join the next shadow organization. One of the things I really want to see us do, if at all possible, if we can throw our efforts behind some other action or if we can come up with our own or something, is to take down an ALEC corporation. Like boycott it until it's no longer part of ALEC and then continue boycotting it until it no longer exists. To give them that message that if you think that this is okay, if you think that you get to write our nation's laws simply because you have a lot of money, a lot of influence, then you're going to be boycotted out of existence. That's what happens, don't do it. And I think that right now, we're not really giving that message. We're giving the message that it's politically inconvenient at this time to do these things. But again, you just wait for a little while and it'll be okay. So I really want to do something a little bit, some stronger message. And I don't think we've done that yet, but I think that we could potentially do so. Maybe, maybe we could also work on getting rid of Alex's tax exempt status. Push that. That's what would hurt. Why are they tax exempt? What does that look like? I mean, and so this, this is the thing: is the idea is how do we turn that into action? That's what that's online petitions. Got to got to educate people. 
that's where I'm. Okay. That's and, good. And I think that's a great idea. But the other thing too is that um, we got to realize that Alec is a, sy a symptom of a corrupt system. And in order to best focus our energies, there's a lot of groups that will go off and help focus uh, our resources in that area. But another thing we have to focus on is to descale uh, these structures. And we need to enter in a dialogue about creating parallel institutions, parallel structures, anyone who's got an idea for a local stock exchange, local currencies, uh, anything like that, so we can economize our efforts. You know, uh, talking about bringing one of these corporations down, you could totally do that by, by you know, creating things like boycott apps for your, for your phone uh, that, that help you with your shopping. We can do, um, uh, we can, there's a lot of structures that, that and a, a lot of people have done these things before, you know, they've done them in, in the Berkshire region, they've done, they've done them in New York, and they're doing them in, in Greece and in Brixton, uh, in Europe, they're doing these things everywhere. And the thing is that as a, a, a corollary to being a conduit for information and education, we also need to be a conduit for systemic integration that's going to be apart from that. And then what will happen is that I think that our resources will give the, uh, take away the legitimacy if we can go off and actually focus like that. Um, Rod, well, I don't see him here right now, you know, he has, he already has a couple of barter networks going, a couple of currencies, and we, we need to go off and echo those things. And then anyone who's, who's uh, informed in technology and things like that can help go off and digitize it and add that fluidity that, that's there, the, the same uh, uh, internet fluidity that brought us here, you know, go off and translate that into economic descent of various kinds, you know, and I think that um, uh, as Occupy, we need to be the, the force that doesn't just attack the symptoms, but attacks the system itself and shines light on alternative uh, options out there, you know. But I think one of the very important messages about what you just said is the idea of not thinking in terms of one front only, but thinking in terms of this, this is a problem that is being fought in so many different areas in our society. And in order to really be effective, we need to go after the system. We need to have to go after the symbols of the system, the symptoms of the system, multiple fronts, which is a good way to plug in multiple people, multiple tactics. And so, it's up in a time with what you just said. Um, anyone who's seen these things play out, or I mean, who's studied history enough to know how these things play out, You'll know that the professional class eventually comes into the fray. It happened in Argentina. It's happening now in Greece. You got doctors, uh, professors, business owners that right now are still, they're struggling to get by, but they're not reacting in the way a lot of us are. And we also need to reach out to them. Right. And that way we are on, on many fronts. You know, we have their organizational structure, which we don't have, and they do. You know, they, they have a good understanding of contract law and these things and they're able to implement their <coughs> ideas you know however mundane or innovative they may or may not be and the thing is that apart from reaching out to the lowest of the low on, on, on in the 99 percent spectrum we also need to reach out to to them as well because otherwise when they come out into the fray they're going to go off and try to re-implement something that mimics the old system because that's what they know so we get back to status quo yeah but if we go off and we have conduits for them to already integrate their indignation into, then we'll have a better chance of making our vision play itself out into you know the next paradigm, whatever that's going to be. I think talk to the children about this. Talk, you know, I talked to children about Occupy. Tell them we were there at the Capitol. That was so great. That was I mean, great. you know, like that, was that those things that, that was great. are what we're asking are not going to change in our lifetime. They could. I mean, let's. Let, we can be realistic, but why not shoot for the stars? I mean, I think oh, yeah. that's what we're doing. I, mean, I think if, I think it's kind of humbling no, I know. at the same time. Sure. Because it's a long journey. Sure. At least thirty years, but it doesn't mean we didn't be proactive. Right. I, I think there's a lot of things that are going to catalyze it yeah. to happen a lot quicker, and and one of those is technology. You know, anyone who's familiar with Moore's law, you know, understands that that things are accelerating at an exponential rate, and the system's never been weaker and the opportunity for the smallest parts of it to make the biggest impact because uh, there's so much uh, 
they, they call it a phase transition, you know, the complexity theory, and that's where we're at. And, uh, uh, sometimes a snowflake will cause an avalanche. You know, sometimes it doesn't. But right now, the system has such a critical mass from all different points, from many different directions that, you know, if we go off and we blow on those snowflakes, I think we, we have a chance to go off and do what hasn't been able to get done in, you know, 3,200 years. Uh, to touch back on Alec, somebody asked how they kept their tax exempt uh, dealings. The two ways they do that is number one, they receive contributions. Number two, they say they give out educational grants. Their educational grants go to their flunkies to teach them how to fuck people over. That's how they get away with it. That's your new currency. They kept, they kept it inside. Like, why don't we do the same? See, a lot of people don't know also, insurance companies are also considered tax exempt because their premise is they don't know when they're going to take a major hit at any time. So the money they make, they don't really make because they have to keep it to pay for disasters. So they get taxed. Yeah, yeah, amazing how that works. You know. Um, you know, so earlier this this week, I was at um, another meeting, uh, activist meeting um, for the Arizona Feminist Action Network, and um, we, we're dealing with our own kind of issues there. But the one thing that is really interesting about the way that they work that I really think we could use potentially um, here at Occupy is the idea that they are a collective, not an organization. And I know that we've talked about this before, but I think the implication of that uh, we could seize a little better. The way that, that they do things is basically like we hash out ideas and there are all these big ideas that come out of meetings. But then usually people who are proposing ideas are like passionate about like this is what I think needs to be done. And so everyone might agree with that but, or they might agree like, oh, yeah, I could help out with that, but I'm not going to take the reins on that. I'd rather focus on this over here. Um, and so basically if someone feels passionate about it, it's like, all right, I'm going to do this. And the, the question isn't, should we do this? So much as if a person feels passionately about something getting done, fine, I'm gonna do it. Who wants to help me do it? And then if enough people from the, the collective uh, you know, wanna support it, then the question is, okay, now is it something that we stamp you know, AZ fan on, or is it still something that AZ fan support that isn't like an actual AZ fan thing? So for Occupy, I think that there's a lot of things like that. Like if someone has the ability to make a boycott app, awesome. Do it. We will all download it. And um, if you need help, I'm sure there are people who would be willing to help. If someone wants to, you know, make trifolds, um, saying, "Hey, I made these trifolds. It's about Alec. Uh, here's all the information. Does anyone think that need anything needs to be added? Who wants to go out with me at this time to hand them out?" And so I think that we could really. I feel like there's a lot of, of time at GA that and meetings like this where it's like we have these ideas, which is fantastic, but then sometimes the ideas just sort of go out into the ether because we're all waiting for someone else to somebody else right to and so i feel like i feel like like for example i'm throwing an <laughs> occupy party and i know i'm doing it so now i just need people to help out but but um but the idea is that i think that that we could all potentially make this movement so much more powerful by seizing that idea maybe there are some things that we're still going to need more bodies for that that you can't do everything that way but i think that there are some actions like on online petition. If if someone made an online petition and started sending it out, and then we everyone here got the link and could also send it out and go from there, that's not something that we necessarily need the Occupy movement to do. That's something that one of us could do, right. and then we could all support it. Did anyone know anyone else here six months ago? <laughs> you knew a couple, huh? Is that it? Oh, I mean, about, I don't know, maybe six hours. You guys knew that. each other. I mean, so, but per predominantly, we all didn't really know each other. So this has been like a get to know you. I think now we're in the next, I think we're ready to take a step, uh, a next step in our relationship. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. I, 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 think, now? I think we're ready for a hug. The <laughs> Occupy <laughs> birthday <laughs> I, I think we're I think we're ready to start following through. I'm personally guilty of this. Hands down. Follow through. Look at my notebook. Police don't take it. <laughs>
uh, <laughs> like li literally got a lot of follow up. So how do we collectively follow up? Um, we have contacts up to Yin Yang that we're not contacting. I see a couple questions. Uh, I have one more point, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, I sort of want to ask because it's like a, a an and maybe an individual question. Um, I was also there at the beginning of the planning meetings before and after, and have, have have told people that I've seen the good stuff, the bad stuff about it. And when I tell other people about what Occupy is, I, I talk about it in the best possible way that the the best things that I've seen out of it. Try to. You know, if, if if need be, I could talk about the the negative things that happen at night and things like that to, to see that. But um, but the, the the question that that I wanted to kind of ask the people that I have seen and and talking to Charlie and Michael and a few other people is the okay. folks that have been that have stuck around for a long time and that are. <laughs> Oh, it feels good. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> now, Woo! Now if they just right. find a parking spot. But I, yeah, and the folks that have stayed around for a long time and that have been effective in the things and the roles that that, that they've taken upon, like you know, maybe and this is maybe naming out people, whatever. Mike Horton being in, in finance, uh, Mike Royer just going to different places, and Charlie being like the person that connects people is. Uh, that's a good idea to send like maybe like the survey form and see what are your best skills. But I think if you've been around for a long time, you, could, you sort of already have seen those type of, of skills or, or what good that you know what good what things that person is is good at and everything. Uh, my question that I always ask, being involved in other groups, to myself is uh, sort of I have a, a commitment to to doing things and I want to see things come about. But I also ask people that have been around. What is it that kind of has made them stay around for uh, for a long uh, long time? And then, what are they looking for? Maybe it's the wrong word, but what are they looking for to get out of this? Because this has been in a conversation before. People think are, they're here and occupied to take advantage of it or use it for for their own personal advantage. My genuine question is like, what is it? Why did you stick around for such a long time? And what is it that you really want to see? out of like this revival phase. So so do we want to like open up stack and have a couple of responses if anyone wants to respond to that real quick? I think my response um, like, I think we need to work on building bridges with people who have been here, who know what we're struggling for and things like that. Um, because uh, I actually sent out an email to uh, a guy who's kind of started the outreach team was one of the original uh, members and this is the response I got back so I'll just share with you. Um, I wish you luck but I do not want to be involved in Occupy Phoenix. Whatever unique spirit and appeal it began with was stripped out of the movement by people who just wanted a soapbox for their own ridiculous fringe nonsense. Um, <laughs> So what I think we need to work on is building bridges with those people and I kind of had an idea of more like an open mic kind of like this but maybe on a larger scale um, so that people feel like they're getting their opinions out there um, and maybe not have it as strict as a GA. So I think we need to work on building those bridges um, and getting those people involved rather than just the general public. Yeah. So, sorry, this is Indirect. Yeah, I guess I should do this actually. Um, uh, uh, I think that's a great idea, and I think that um, I don't know if we want to do something like you know a night of group therapy um, or yeah. something, like something called that because um, I've had that experience. There are so many people that I've met through Occupy who are very near and dear to my heart, who um, are amazing people, activists, what what have you, who have no interest in stepping foot. Uh, back into it's, something it Occupy related, yeah. unless it's something very particular of an actual event that they like support. Yeah, and I I'm think that, um, and that's sad because there are there are a lot of things that that they bring to the movement that is really fantastic. Like one of the most just absolutely devoted people ever. Like that that was just you know blood, sweat, and tears for Occupy Phoenix. Just got so burnt out and and like didn't feel like he had a voice at all anymore. So not a bad idea, and I love that idea. And that's a really sad email. So.
I think to go to go and then John, but then JC's been wanting to say something for a while. Rick, um, reflection is good. Um, and I think that's kind of what you're asking in many ways is why are we still here? Uh, personally, I'm here because I want to really see some shit change. Uh, I, I feel like there's a lot of unfinished business. I'm, I'm willing to still associate myself with Occupy even after hearing all this stuff because of what I believe it to be. Um, I came down here six months ago watching Occupy Wall Street, watching Egypt, all online. And I said, I want to do that here. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. I saw a lot of groups getting together. And it apparently has not worked out that way here. That's fine because that gives us a lot to learn and work on. Now, now what do we do? I think that's the most important thing is what do we do going forward? And group therapy, reflection, try to bridge with these people. We have a lot of talks with people. I, and when I describe it, I describe it as, yeah, this got some faults. Uh, but there's also, what's this? Is this a fault? I, don't, I would say this is a plus. So, I mean, you got 20 strangers six months ago, pretty much, that are committed to something. We all feel something. And this is not everyone that's really feeling it either. We still got 11,000 people on Facebook. We still got X amount of people. We got, how many people are watching? We got six people, God bless them, watching. You know, so, staring at you guys. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we rotate it. Um, but, but, uh, We've got helicopters. Um, so I don't know. I, I, Margarito asked a question. I think uh, we we were also on some other stuff. I feel like we need to keep going. But I, I feel like a lot of us are here for a lot of good reasons. I'm sure some people are here to go on their soapbox. Uh, but again, that's maybe they were here for a bigger purpose too. They just um, they just. They use that as an opportunity. They're opportunists, and maybe we all are. I mean, but it's just how you use it. And then, um, I feel like I've been channeling a lot of the energy and a lot of the ideas that I'm already hearing just in a few minutes of being here with something that I have. Well, thank you, though. Um, an idea that I've been having. I think that what we need is obviously more community, um, more healing, more. Um, vivation, more energy, um, maybe not as much, uh, maybe more structure, but at the same time, less ownership. Um, and I think something that would be awesome is if we were able to um, put some memes out there. I like, I saw something out there about um, like Anarchy Thursdays or Wednesdays or something. Can someone share? The beer one? Or is that I have no idea. Like there's... I just... Like Casey, Casey Moore's, Moore's or something? Yeah, Casey something. Moore's. Yeah. Oh. So like, like... What about if we were to create, like, expand throughout the valley? It not be necessarily about just Occupy Phoenix or just Occupy ASU, who are, we're all kind of struggling, we want to bring in lots of new people. What about if we were to, like, not take ownership over Occupy Arizona, Occupy Decolonize Arizona, or whatever, and just say, and we have seven goals, and that goal is to talk about a topic each day of the week. So, like, let's say Saturdays could be um, Sustainability Saturdays. Um, and it's a 24-hour period. No one takes ownership of it. If you want to talk about sustainability, you show up at a number of these locations. Cesar Chavez Plaza can be one of them. Um, you know, the uh, the Tempe Park on Fourth Avenue can be another one for you know Occupy Tempe. Anywhere, you know, people could be doing it in Globe. People could be doing it everywhere, and it's just around one central topic. Um, and then we could have like um, um, Fight Fear Fridays, talking about healing. Um, and, you know, we can just do some peer mediation. We could talk about nonviolent or compassionate communication. We could share a lot of our concerns, our fear, build camaraderie around that idea. Maybe we can even have like a no agenda, I don't know, Tuesdays or something, where we literally just get together with board games and hang out and have fun and just get to know each other. Yeah, and like anyone can post on, you know, if we do the social media stuff, whatever, like, hey, this is, you know, I don't know, um, uh, solidarity economy um, Sundays and on this day we're gonna have so-and-so talk and you know they might be a point person for that event but they can't take ownership over the entire day um, and that is kind of like the central idea throughout all of Arizona for just one day a week every single day of the week just bring some more bodies in not as much agenda not as much so boxing just have fun around one kind of central topic does anyone uh, 
have any comment on that. Um, otherwise, I, I was gonna say something, and then I'm gonna let JT, uh, JC, who's been very patient over here. Does anyone have a comment on these ideas? Or? I do. <laughs> it's kind of what you just mentioned a little bit earlier, and it, 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 I don't mean it in any way or whatever, but it's saying we can come here with both a lot of ideas and, and they, they will catch on or whatever, but uh, like, the, you know, in other uh, situations, people would ask, would you be willing to like create one of those I'll events create the page. and do something? Sure. And, and the way I see it, again, it's like we say it's occupied, decolonized Arizona or whatever, but no one has, there's no general assembly for it per se. It's just, again, like these are the locations where, you know, these seven days happen, you know, and go and show up. That's kind of the central topic. Maybe someone's organizing something around that idea. Maybe someone's not. Is that, is it a Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I was Sasha. Go ahead, Sasha. All right. Uh, so one of the yeah, things I, I think that's really important to be able to make these kind of things so. happen, um, especially when we're talking about wanting people to be able to feel that they can take initiative on these things and actually come up with ideas and implement them, is I think that we really need to start thinking not only in terms of what skills do people have, but what skills are people capable of sharing with others. Um, one of the you know, powerful things about Occupy is the fact that we bring in so many new people who've never done organizing or activism of any kind before. But the disadvantage of that is people don't necessarily always have a skill set that allows them to know how to implement, how to make these plans actually you know, get off the ground or out of the air or whatever. Um, so I think being able to teach people how to do that, I think would give people a lot more confidence in terms of knowing just basic things. Like if I want to get flyers taken care of, you know, cheap and get them out, you know, is there a group that's already in place to help out with that? You know, where do I go to get you know, cheap flyers? I mean, even that kind of information, people don't necessarily know. So figuring out a way, how can we share this kind of knowledge within our group? Um, just because it's kind of time sensitive, go ahead, Rick. Um, I just wanted to make a point. We're all basically adults here. We have our own individuality. We know what our responsibilities are, what our capabilities are. There's a lot we could do without being a group. Uh, as an example, last year when they were talking about this centennial, me, just as a kick, when they were talking about making 100 years a century, I put a blog out and it said, you want to make century in 100 years? Recall Brewer. Less than a week later, somebody put it up as a press release. Two weeks later, petitions were circulating. You want to have things happen, take initiative, get it done. But a part of that is, is being empowered to do it. Pardon me? So, a part of that is being empowered to do it. And if we can help each other. All I did was get on the internet. If we can somebody help empower each other, though. I made a comment yeah, back, and somebody took the ball and ran with it. What about yeah, and I, I think idea people, people, the coalition idea? Right, the coalition idea that we can support each other with those, 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 those projects, and that's great. Yeah. No. Did you? No, I was just helping them get okay. noticed because they're in the shadows. So, yeah. now, the, one other thing is there's a, a site on there where I can't remember the name of it, but petition, you can make up a petition. Change that over. Change that over. I can't remember what it was. It's the, <laughs> I came across it by the lady that made the one against Purina to call, recall those chicken chews that killed her dog and a lot of other dogs. Uh, I think she's about 20,000 signatures away from getting her petition going through. We had a change.org. Um, I know I, it local I might be something like that. I don't Canada know. Canada. But there is a way to start a petition. Oh, yeah, yes. And right. the, the reason I'm bringing that up, the ALEC accountability bill that was introduced to the House by the gentleman from Tucson got shot down in committee a couple weeks ago. So ALEC can continue you know, pocketing their money. The politicians can still pocket their money. So maybe we need to make a, pe a petition. I agree. I think we did. And didn't I'm we? about to look into that to do it myself because I'm one of them kind of guys that just gets up and did it. Get her done. I think we got enough signing. Jesse? I had something to say about uh, Alec. Um, I know that Progress Virginia is a nonprofit organization and there was an article out that um, they were exposing uh, some of the things that I was doing in a press report, uh, which
message they gave to uh, one of the uh, groups. I don't think it was a company. I think it was a group that was supporting Alec, and she presented it to them. Uh, one of the things in there said that they um, there was two hundred and thirty thousand dollars that was paid for the politicians to meet with the members of Alec, and um, you know there's a Progress Arizona, I think, that maybe we could work with and show them that, hey, this is what they did in Virginia, and maybe work with them on getting something out like that to take to the groups that are in Alec here. PFAW just put out a report last week that outlines all of um, Alec's activities in Arizona, um, people for the American way, and you can get a PDF on, of it online, and it's very comprehensive. Real cool. Real yeah. quick before I'm, I'm giving them too much. You give me, you build I'm putting, up. I'm putting, I'm putting yeah, too much yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, sure. But we were, we've been for those people that just walked up. We've been talking about today uh, a campaign against Alec as a sort of a resurgence uh, because of how much pub they got right now they're such a hot stove they just they got companies fleeing them they're bad in Arizona it, and we talked about why would we do this uh, SB 1070 is coming up the hearings 24 23rd 24 25th 25th there's gonna be a big action tying Alec to that you know, remind people because I was talking to some of the organizers for that and it's they're they're seeing a lot of uh, less of a, you know, fear, you know, for, for frivolousness for, uh, if that's a word, uh, for, yeah, like, they don't see that kind of same passion as two years ago, you know? It, it's just a natural, it just dies off, so it's a, it may be a new way to kind of, and then support them, you know, because this is the same kind of stuff. I think most people here would, and maybe we do a, a proposal, but maybe we start a group, Occupy Alec, as part of this. There, as is a a, there is a group planning a right. an action for the SRP board meeting that's scheduled for May, May 7th. 7. And yeah. so um, there are some people, a coalition of groups that are trying to put that together. And I can give you the name. Uh, Angel Garcia is the one who's coordinating it. You know, yeah. and I'm, you've got his contact information. You know, so anyway. There's a, he's spearheading it and uh, you know we might as well do it what they did is they recently had elections and they you know they have a bunch of new board members and they're being sworn this is the their first board meeting wish. and the new ones are being sworn in the lobbyist um, who works for SRP is on the private um, for private <laughs> sector board of Alec and so not on he said publicly that he doesn't see any reason to withdraw support from Alec and that Alec does good work, but um, it's rumored eyes. that they're considering not renewing their membership that um, expires at the end of the year. I don't think that's good enough. And what we want is for them to pull out of Alec now and for the lobbyist guy to quit his position on the national board of Alec. So anyway, the, it's in the early stick planning stages, so if anybody wants to be involved in that, I'm sure Angel would be happy to. It's great. Cool. Yeah, and we talked about not just attacking the symptom. I mean, that it's it, we have to kind of address it. Sorry. Especially capitalizing off of the recent stuff, but go further a little bit, because, you know, what other group are they going to form under? Uh, I'm I'm personally not going to celebrate McDonald's leaving by going and buying McDonald's. Yeah. You know, right. exactly. So I, I don't think we anybody's right. trying to reward these guys. Right. Be able to capitalize off of suffering in any way, like whether it's warfare, whether it's that, whether it's you know denying people health care. There's ways to capitalize on it, and then talking about you know these these symptoms rather than looking to the cure a lot of the, what I'm focusing on right now is building the cure because we can talk about you know damn the man damn out like all this and come at it with the rage or we could create alternatives 
and then bring people to those alternatives and say, look, the world doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to go into that dystopian you know, future where the corporations rule every aspect of our lives, even what we think. Okay, it looks crazy, it looks creepy, but you see, you hear about the RFID chips and all kinds of stuff that they're putting in people's body. Who knows what, what, what they have planned for us, because it's not in our best interest. So what about we create something that is in the best interest of all communities, no matter who they are, no matter what race, no matter what religion, no matter what ever, anything, and bring them all together and show them that there is another world that is possible. And we can be the change, and we have to start acting that way. Uh, world in operation. Is, it, it, we have to understand that because it, it's such a big transition, the thing that, that these corporations have that we don't are, are, are the capital flows to be able to fund uh, all the infrastructure that's going to be needed. But if we get the financial uh, resources and, and or, or we create them right through creating different banking structures and so on and so forth, then we can give these opportunities to the average person to be able to build their own capital to mitigate things in the way they see fit. And so who's going to do it? Everyone can do it. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say, is that we've learned a valuable skill through, like, whether you guys think that it's a failure or whatever, um, I see it as a solution. We have learned what's called participatory democracy, which is an amazing, non-hierarchical, like, vertical decision-making system. Horizontal. Horizontal, sorry, not vertical. <laughs> You're right, thank you. Thank it's you. all about vertical. Uh, yeah. Um, Long <laughs> um, and, and that's an important tool for cooperatives. That's how cooperatives work. It's the decisions are made by the people that are most affected by the changes. So when you say who makes the decision for the people, the people that it directly uh, affects. You know. The point is that we got to outreach through. Like, yes, we exactly. Have to have them, they are making them. Right, exactly. So we got to plant a lot of seeds, a lot of thoughts, a lot of solutions. Be like, hey, this can happen. Who wants to engage in this? And then those people that want to create that, they go create it and they make their own decisions. It's not about anyone controlling them. It's about them controlling their own destiny, their own future, and their own financial situation. And yet, this is going to be really awkward given the kind of um, organizational structure that we do prefer and occupy. But sometimes the most effective way to bring about change, unfortunately, is to first off to create a hierarchical organization and to put the people who are not currently in power into power within that hierarchical organization and have them make the decisions and bring their wisdom in. And it has been very, it, it's uncomfortable, especially if you are a person who's accustomed to being you know, in a place of power and privilege. But at the same time, this can also create amazing changes in a very short amount of time. Yeah. That I think it's a completely different model though than what we use now. And I think it's something that most of us would project, but I think has real potential that we haven't even looked at. You know, uh, there's a model, a real estate model, called a community land trust, where the neighborhood buys up its own property and they give everybody a 99 year lease. But to tie in what you're talking about, one of their, their structure is that they form um, a small organization that has me members of the community land trust, but then it has members of the community who aren't part of the land trust and members of the city so that any decisions that they make aren't going to have any sort of uh, negative third party implications. And so maybe any sort of organizations that, that we decide to create that are going to be specializing in you know, this or that, maybe if we go off and we allow, uh, we, we leave open seats for people that aren't members of our particular vision, that might be a, a way to create something that's a little bit different and leaves uh, third party input to be valid within those structures, you know what I mean? I get what you're saying, but I think more what I was thinking of was along the lines of reaching out to organizations, for instance, that are people of color -led or LGBT led and saying to them, you know, you've been working for a while and you know what you're doing and we would like to work in the same cause as you. What do you want us to do? And to be willing to accept leadership from other people to not always have to be part of the group that's making the leadership decisions. And that's really hard because we like to think that you know everyone should be a leader, but maybe sometimes some of us should not be leaders for a little while and step back and let other people be the ones to tell us what they've been telling us for years and years and years and years and years about what's wrong. And listen for once. So in that, excuse the guy always. <laughs> I've I've never seen you before. I just wanted to say 
want to give you a chance to speak. Um, and anyone else, uh, Jason or Brian, if anyone wants to say anything, uh, what observations or why you're here, or names, just because listening to people, I think, I feel like sometimes we don't always engage people who come around. So, if anyone wants. Okay. I'm just here. Okay. Jason? Uh, I'm here because like, yeah. like when it started out as a great, a great, great thing. Yeah. It did burn out, like you were saying earlier, a phoenix is born from its own ashes. So. Got anything, Brian? I'm going to add a story. I spend a lot of time with these guys down here, Jason and Brian. All right, folks, I Good times. Love y'all. Right, See you, Brack. Yeah, you're still here. Fight the good fight. Just, uh, you're still here. I didn't want to say it. So, I don't know. Story time. We can talk about stories, we can talk about organizing. I could add something too that it's part of like the continu continuing work. And initially it was like symbolic, right? The 24 7. And yeah. while I wasn't here throughout the time, I, I, got, to see well, I got to see it come down to one person. <laughs> Uh, Cody Pearson that moved back to, to Bisbee. Cody! And and that, that sort of inspired me, but at the same time I'm going, okay, you know, symbolically if this person wasn't here, is, is that it? Is, is the whole group, group done? So now looking at, it, at what's happening today, and looking like a few weeks ago where it sort of transitioned into an online thing and people arguing back and forth online, I was thinking, well, where is there going to be another sort of meeting like this where we sort of come back together and, and refocus or re, re, uh, re energize ourselves and can continue working? So, symbolically, again, seeing one person for the 24 7 inspired me, and I, I figured that it would keep going at least for a few months or so, and it did. And, and I'm hoping the same thing for, for this type of setting right now. I, and, oh. Go ahead. And that kind of goes back to a lot of what I was talking about. I'd love for us to have, like, I don't know, uh, I don't know, a Thursday or whatever. I don't care what day it is, um, where we talk about, like, we do these brainstorming sessions. We write some to-do lists of what what's not working, what needs to be done, you know. And hopefully, again, every single subset of Occupy Arizona or whatever, like, has that day that is designed for what needs to be done, what have we done, what's working, what's not. You know what I mean? And having those ongoing brainstorming processes that kind of think tank on a specific day of the day of the week if someone wants to take ownership of it they take ownership of it so so on this guy's note uh to me is the biggest lesson i've learned is like just how it's an evolution process and sometimes we think like it's the right way like we did for a while we were like i was a part of it have to be here like to me it was just it made too much sense to be here and people were like leave we gotta leave we gotta leave and i was like no because people here didn't want to leave. So I think it's also just having that patience. So in, in evolution, things slowly change. Uh, so that's how I look at this thing is just, it's a slow change, but you, you have to realize that it's, it is evolving. And what, what, why we're not gonna all sleep out here tonight is, is because we've evolved into not doing that anymore, you know? We're, tired of that and and but, but we're evolving so i think just gotta be patient uh i saw that a lot of people aren't which is fine we gotta still find a way to connect to those people that are not that that have left that have left because that passion doesn't just leave like that that energy that they want to change the world doesn't just leave it just doesn't leave them it's just they're just they've had enough I've burned out. How many people have burned out here? <laughs> I mean, literally. How many times? This many times. Yeah. <laughs> that many times. So, so I, I mean, I mean, literally, we're burning out, but at the same time, you know, we're still here. So I think if we can still come back, we're an example to others that they can still come back. If we get our shit together, build it, they'll come. Other people will come. Uh, um, and it is, it's whoever's here, but I do think we need to, to, to go out to people and, and talk. We talked about this as an idea, uh, a survey. Why are we not surveying people? Find out what their issues are, seeing how we can support them. How do we support communities? If you wanna grow a movement, you you have to you start people. speaking to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you gotta start connecting. And the I only way to focus connect- Focus groups. Huh? Focus groups. Focus groups, I mean, when you're going out and start 
canvassing, so to speak, you, you start collecting data. And actually, a couple of us have been talking about this for the last couple of weeks, or last week specifically. Uh, step one would be uh, uh, info gathering, data collection. You know, who are the audience? What what campaigns are we starting to do? Because um, we here could think Alec is the is the way to go, but what about if it's not the way to go? But I th I still think we need to also act on what we feel, and I think Alec is a big. And um, to peg off of a lot of what you're talking about, about people and speaking to communities and finding out what they're about, um, you know, it would be cool if we all just individually started doing some kind of like um, get to know your local occupier type things, you know what I mean? Where we go to schools, we go to our workplace, we go to wherever and just say, here I am, this is who I am. And, you know, you have questions, you know, I can give you some answers, but I'm just one individual, you know, and um, kind of spread that idea because yeah, um, I'm not sure if you guys have followed the evolution of um, like the L LGBTQ community, um, that is actually something that they use to spread a lot of awareness about, about trans awareness as well. Is, you know, come in, you know, a Q&A session with your local transgender, you know, and hey, what are you about? Why is this? I thought this, I heard that, you know, is this true? And, and really connect the dots and put a human face to something like this, because unfortunately some people still think that we're all a bunch of crazy anarchists that aren't organized and don't know why we're here. And that can't be the furthest thing from the truth. And perhaps if we invite them to ask us those crucial questions that help them think that way, you know, then maybe we can start spreading some awareness. It's actually suggested to us. Um, <clears throat> that yesterday, a group of us went to 99% Spring, and a guy was like, I was trying to get involved with, the, I overheard him, I was trying to get involved with Dr. Five Phoenix, but, you know, they just, they weren't organized. You know, that's, okay. Fine. And you gotta understand, this is a grassroots. Yeah. Uh, but then I heard him say, "Well, why don't they just have another conversation? Why don't they just do like a meetup where people just come and meet and, and, and almost like what you're saying?" And, and it's a great idea. So piggyback on this idea with that idea with anyone else's. But we've talked about consistently. Have we done it? No, I don't think as a big group. Uh, like going to a local restaurant or something, patronizing them, uh, showing what we're about, which is building community, and then doing this action. So I think that's a proposal maybe. And we just set it up. I mean, just set it up like tonight. Just put it out there. Invite people. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go to crash the local business, bring them our business, yeah. start relationships, and let them hear our conversation. Well, what are those called again? Because I know that there's a recent movement. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, cash, cash mob. mob. Cash yeah. mob. Like a flash mob, but a cash mob. Uh -huh. You know, like a local business that's struggling. Right. You get in there and you support their asses because we need the local community. We do. We and do. It, and it feeds into the boycott. That's part of the solution. Exactly. Local it's a massive boycott. 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 I think yeah. that's Broke what we're up. doing. We're, we're protesting what's the solution. Yeah. What's the alternative? We don't start doing an alternative. We're just out here That's protesting. Why we're, we're not issuing demands is because that is acknowledging the power structure. And you know what? Fuck the power structure. Okay, I'm going to say that, and you guys know I don't swear often. All right? But fuck the power structure. We can be the power structure if we want to be the power structure. We are. And the I want to be. I don't know about you guys. I can keep going. Sorry. But I saw and with that, I want to give it to yeah. everyone. Well, I was at the training yesterday, too, and at the end they asked people to um, kind of coalesce around their interests. And there were, I don't know, what, five or six different groups. Yeah. And so um, people were coming over to me who wanted to, to work on getting money out of politics. And they literally would not let me leave without giving me a sign-up list with their names and email addresses because they want to be contacted, they want to keep doing stuff, they want to be part of something. And this was the biggest group, hands down, that people gravitated towards. It's almost like Occupy in many senses. It was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll do something. <laughs> but I think just being down here, too, and what you're saying, uh, and then I'll stop talking. Uh, we are the part of the system that makes it tick. I mean, if we literally stopped supporting the system, we're that chain in the system that if we stop, because we can do that, we're the part that has that ability, we have the force to remove ourselves. It's hard, especially individually, but collectively, we can remove ourselves. The system does not, it doesn't work. 
It doesn't work without our feeding it's into it. Video. We feed <laughs> it. Huh? Yeah. Parts of it don't. I mean, big parts. Sure. Of it don't. Ice can show up in the middle of the night at someone's house and grab family members and drag them off, whether we participate in the system or not. So there are still parts of the system that we have to fight against. But I do agree that a very, very large part of it, sure. the only way you're going to get rid of it is if you opt out. But we have to confront it too, because it, it's inescapable. Hearing in the news, 700 folks got arrested on a bridge in September. And that's when I started researching the stock. Just to answer why I'm here. And I keep coming back because... The one with the light on the building? What's that? It was in New York. It was in New York. Yeah, but... It, the Brooklyn Bridge, I think? Yeah, was it the same March that had the light on the building with the message? I think that, oh, was, that was later. I think that was later. Um, San Francisco Bridge. And I keep, I, I come from a, a team sports background, mm -hmm. and a lot of that is you're driven by your your teammate, and um, it's there's a lot of amazing people here, and that's what make makes me come back. Is I I see the work that other folks put in, it makes me want to work harder, and. Um, it's kind of a hopeless job, you know, but but I thankless. do, but I, but I, and it's thankless too. But I mean, it, you feel like it's overwhelming. You can't. How are we going to do this? But I'm an optimist, so I feel like we can do this. Um, I'm not sure where, where he went. He was talking about this might be like a 30-year job. And that's how I look at it, unfortunately. But I mean, I have a 15-year-old daughter, so when she's 45, that'd be a pretty good world for her. That's how I look at it. <laughs>